go to the selection the member's meeting. time has expired the honourable oh. judith Collins. oh mr speaker what a delight to be able to take part in this debate today it's been an interesting um few days and in my opinion who knew that we had a slave labour camp operating on the north shore of Auckland, uh, where, of course, the Labour Party is now, which the Labour Party leader, Mr Andrew Little, is running from at the speed of light. I thought it would be a good idea to look at some of these things. Who was involved here? Well, Matt McCartan, who apparently is no longer involved with the Labour Party. Actually, just a few months ago, he was, in fact, the Chief of Staff for Mr Andrew Little. He was running the Labour Party leader's office and he was brought in by David Cunliffe when he was the leader. So he's been around for quite some time before that. And the other, but all of a sudden, then he was sent to Auckland to be the director of the Auckland office, which, according to Andrew Little, was his Auckland office. So, no doubt, paid for by parliamentary service. And as I drove past it just the other day, that office in Grafton Road, there was just signs everywhere for Andrew Little MP in Auckland. And I thought it was interesting that it had the crest of parliament all over it. So I, that might need looking at. Um, but in in as well as that, there's a Mr Paul Chalmers, who is part of the ruling council, was part of the ruling council Labour Party, and he has now apparently stood down from that. So I thought I should have a look at who he actually is. Well, he was in fact campaign chair for Jacinda Ardern. So I guess he must know a lot of people in the Labour Party as well as having been on their ruling council. He's actually set up and owns a school for, guess what? foreign students. And, um, but he'll be all right in this case because he's actually spokesperson for the Indian Education Group, the same, the same people that the Labour Party has spent the last so many months attacking and saying that they don't come to New Zealand for education. So I guess that would be experience speaking. Then our, our the question that needs to be asked is where has all this money come from to undertake this uh, this, this undertaking of 85 foreign students coming to New Zealand to live in substandard conditions and to advocate for the Labour Party. Well, there are all sorts of rumours floating around about this, Mr Speaker, and I really think people need to know the answers to it. And I'm really looking forward to Andrew Little asking some very hard questions of Mr Matt McCartan, Mr Paul Chalmers and Jacinda Ardern's campaign manager, and various other people who must know about this. The, the figure of 240,000 is actually being thrown around at the moment, because apparently that's what Mr McCartan thought the unions, in other words, the very people who clean in this place, the very people who undertake the work as union members, that they should be paying for this scheme. I think it actually there's some really good questions about this that need to be asked and answered. But in the meantime, this government is getting on with the business of governing. And I, when I look back at the Labour Party's problems, you'd have to think, is it a conspiracy or a cock-up? And I'd have to say, in this case, it's both. And that's why we just have to get on with the job of governing. And in the inland revenue area, of which I'm very proud, we're actually getting on to make people's lives a lot easier. And all of those people in small businesses who do actually pay wages for the 30 to 40 hours a week that people work, unlike the Labour Party people, those people very soon, from the 1st of April next year, will be able to choose to not have to use provisional and terminal tax, will not have to pay that anymore. Instead, they will have, be able to come onto a system very, like, very much like PAYE, which is what all we salary and wage earners pay our tax through. So they'll be able to decide every month they'll do their profit and loss and they'll pay their tax based on that month's profit or loss. That means at the end of the year there'll be a bit of a wash up, but it'll be nothing like the extreme difficulty, financial difficulty that so many small business people find themselves getting into, particularly in their second year of business. And all the wonderful things we've done in our budget, all the wonderful things we've been able to do as a government, all the wonderful things that business have been able to do themselves, this is, in my opinion, the number one thing that will make the biggest difference to keeping businesses going, particularly small businesses, encouraging innovation. But also, let's not forget keeping people employed, keeping the people who are the salary and wage earners in a job 
because the business that's paying their wages is still going to be around past the second year. So these are the sorts of innovations we're doing in revenue. It's what we're doing in government. It's making technology work for people and for New Zealanders other than, rather than the other way around. Calvin Davis. Thank you, Mr.